how are we welcome back to my channel um two one new thing my hair is now pink and i cut it up more um it's currently wet but i'm actually living for the wet look but anyway um so yes i dyed my hair pink i scalp bleached well i didn't scalp bleach it. i got it done at the lawns nathan did it he's the best i will link his instagram down below if you are looking to transform your hair he is your man here's a picture of it dry in case you didn't see it on my instagram it literally got like 500 plus likes and like i average one to 200 200 if it's special so 500 likes is like a deal but anyway so yes my hair is pink now that we're over that today's video so i have been promising this video or wanting to film this video for so long because i get so anytime i mention like going to thailand or booking or whatever i get so many questions like how much is it what how much are the flights how much is the accommodation how much spending money do you need how do you book it to use a travel agent blah 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 blah, blah. So I said I would film this video today, answer all your questions. So first thing you want to do when you're booking uh, any holiday really is get your flights booked because when you get your flights booked, you know your dates and when you know your dates, you can plan your itinerary, your hotels, your accommodation, your hostels, whatever. For me booking the flights, I booked with Emirates. The reason I booked with Emirates is because any long haul flight I've done, I've went with Emirates. I'm um, part of their membership program, which is the Sky Wards. Uh, to join any like airline or anything's membership program, you don't have to like pay or anything like that. You literally can just sign up on their website. You start off as a blue member and I'm a silver member now because I flew Ireland, Australia, Australia, Ireland at Christmas and back to Australia then after. So I'm a silver member, which means I get 42 kg luggage. Woo! I would recommend if you're doing a lot of long haul traveling to definitely join a membership program. And then when you fly with the same airline, you get like loyalty rewards and everything like that. So it works out really well for you. Um, obviously, if you want to go more budget, you can just go onto Skyscanner or Kayak or Google Flights and you can go like search the flights there pick the cheapest one whatever but the only thing is with the cheapest flights normally there's long stopovers switching airports sometimes budget flights so maybe no food or no entertainment like no tv no charge or whatever which isn't appealing to me on an eight hour plus flight like if it's Ryanair, Dublin to Paris, Dublin to Berlin, Dublin to wherever, fine. Like stick me on a Ryanair flight. But other than that, no thank you. It's not worth, the cheap flights aren't worth it. Like they actually aren't. When you're, you're saving money, but then you're in an airport for ages and we all know how expensive airports are. So yeah. I didn't book directly through the Emirates website. So I went onto the Emirates website to book the flights. And they were coming up like $1,600, which is a lot. So I was like, no, I can definitely find this cheaper. So I went on to Skyscanner and I put in like in the little thing, I just searched Emirates and I got a flight for $1,100. Um, I was a little concerned because I was like, oh, if I book through Emirates, will I still be able to in like do my frequent flyer program or whatever it is it turns out you can so even if you book through a third party uh, flight thing a flight website even if you book through a third party website you can still at least for emirates in a way you can still like i went into the app i put in my skywards number and all my flight details come up all my miles that i'll be getting came up and everything like that so that is flights, um, you can fly with whoever you want to be honest, I'm not saying Emirates is the best airline, I'm not saying it's the worst, it's just the one I chose coming to Australia, so I'm like, I might as well keep going with them when I've never had any problems on their flights. So that was $1,100, which is around 680 euro-ish, depending on the exchange rate. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do after you have booked your flights is obviously check out accommodation you want to plan your itinerary where you're going to go um 
some people like everyone does Thailand differently some people just book their flights don't book anything in between and just go with the flow I'm not I cannot think I'm a Taurus I'm a creature of comfort I like knowing what I'm doing where I'm going where I'm gonna be <laughs> that sounds just that is not my vibe like I could not just book a flight to Phuket have 30 days and not know what I'm doing like I couldn't definitely not so but if you are that kind of person you can do it that way otherwise what I did is I split so we're going for a month so I split it into four places so first up is Patong well near enough to Patong then after that we're going to Aonang in Krabi which is near Relay Beach which I'm dying to see after that Kaolak um, and after that pee pee and then back to Phuket to fly home uh, the other th times I've went to Thailand I have done Chiang Mai I've done Koh Phangan for the full moon party I've done Koh Samui, Koh Tao and pee pee loved pee pee, pee pee was definitely my favourite that I've been to in Thailand um, if you are going on like a girls holiday or anything like that you're going to want to base your trip around the full moon party which is in Copenhagen. so Copenhagen is where the full moon like the main big giant full moon par party is on and the party really starts like four or five days before leading up to the full moon and the full moon is like the end so you want to be in Copenhagen four or five days before the full moon when we went to Copenhagen you want to stay on the full moon beach I would recommend um you can obviously stay further out which is a bit cheaper but I would recommend staying on the full moon beach so we stayed in the Penang base Bay Shore Resort which was fab couldn't fault it absolutely amazing hotel breakfast included everything like really central location really safe and right on the full moon beach which is what you want what I did when I was planning Thailand is just research places, research when I want to go. Like, I want to go to the Similan Islands, which is very near to Khao Lak. And then I looked up Khao Lak, what's there? Um, did I did it kind of grab my attention? It did, so I decided to go there. I've been dying to go to Raleigh Beach, so I had to stay in Ao Nang and Krabi. And then um, Phuket is just our first stop where we fly into so we're gonna have five days there kind of exploring around there Thailand is so easy to explore it's so cheap to get around um, tuk tuks taxis planes ferries buses they're all very cheap so once you have your kind of itinerary booked like you should google the map of Thailand and kind of go like instead of going to say Chiang Mai and then going to Koh Tao and then back to Phi Phi you're better going like Chiang Mai, Phi Phi over to Koh Tao and then Copenhagen and Koh Samui because they're all on the same side if that makes sense um so definitely just kind of look up how to get places when you're doing your itinerary otherwise there's a million travel blogs and travel vloggers so once you've your itinerary route what way you want to go you want to start looking into accommodation so with accommodation in thailand it's generally very cheap you can get a five-star hotel for like 30 or 40 euro for one night um or you can get a hostel for a lot cheaper it depends on what kind of vibe you want if you want like more of a backpacker vibe if you want a couple's holiday more kind of luxurious if you want a gal's trip, something like middle of the road, it's totally up to you. With any accommodation, what I would say though is definitely, definitely go on to TripAdvisor. You can find ratings for absolutely every type of accommodation there. So go into TripAdvisor, type in where you want to stay, read the reviews and decide for yourself. So personally me, this is my itinerary. So I'm going to tell you just where I'm staying prices etc so you kind of get a bit of a gist of the breakdown but when you're booking accommodation two apps i use for booking accommodation are agoda and booking.com and um, they're really easy to use they are very safe websites to book and to pay through 
they're totally covered if anything goes wrong and also they have very cheap reasonable rates. The first place we're going is we're flying into Phuket and we're kind of staying in the Patong, Patong Beach area. Now we didn't want to stay exactly on in Patong Beach on Bangla Road because if you've ever been to Patong you know it is absolutely mental and we kind of wanted to stay a bit further out in more of a secluded kind of intimate hotel kind of vibe rather than like a big chain or somewhere directly on Bang Road where it's just mental. After much searching I found the Ban Yin Di Resort which is in, it's really close to Pu, like to Patong Beach but it's still a little bit out as well. Now this place is a four star hotel, we are staying there for five nights so it's $585 for five nights for the two of us which is 370 euro so that is 185 euro each i'm doing this based on me and someone else traveling obviously some people might want to go solo some people be, might be sharing with more people like there could be three or four of you in a room but for two of us so it's 185 euro each so per night that is 37 euro. That is a four star hotel with breakfast included. It looks amazing. Obviously I haven't stayed there so I can't tell you the exact quality of the hotel. I will be updating that on my Instagram. It will be linked down below. If that, I think that was the most expensive place we booked, which I mean, isn't. It might be like, it depends what kind of holiday you want, but 37 euro a night with breakfast included is not expensive. From Patong we're going across to Ao Nang. For the Ao Nang Hotel we are staying in the Hula Hula Resort. It's another four star hotel and for this for seven nights it was $457. Um, this is Australian dollars by the way. So that is 290 euro for two of us or 145 euro each which is 20 euro a night like and that has breakfast included as well and that's for seven nights so you can pay anywhere from 10 to like you can pay ex like there are places in Thailand that are expensive for Thailand but if you were paying like 100 euro for per night for a room like you would be at home like some pla most places at home would be 60 to 120 depending like in Dublin I'd say it's ridiculous you would get like five star top of the range like everything from Anang we are going to Kaulak now Kaulak was unfortunately hit by a tsunami in 2004 so obviously a lot of the it's only building itself back up now like Obviously a tsunami takes a while to recover from. So the hotel we are staying in in Kaulak was actually one of the hotels in Kaulak to survive the tsunami. Recently it went under last year, a huge renovation of the whole hotel. We are staying in the Suan Palm Resort for six nights. And the Suan Palm Resort, wait for how cheap, this is a three star hotel. But like looking at the reviews and looking at the photos, it looked, very very nice obviously I can't say until like we go there but six nights is $237 so that works out at 12 euro 50 per night 12 euro 50 so I'm dying to get there and see what that hotel is like it's right on the beach it has like the coconuts bar which is like one of the main bars in um, Kaulak and I'm just dying to see what it's like for 12.50 a night including breakfast I mean you can't go wrong can you so then from Kaulak we are going down to Pee Pee which is the my favorite part of Thailand that I have visited so far in Pee Pee we are staying in the Pee Pee Princess it is right in the middle of everything. Last time I went to PPI, I stayed in the PP Charlie, which is like their sister hotel joined on, but just a little bit more budget. The rooms are smaller, more basic, etc. So I got a really good deal on the PP Princess, which is $400 each. 
So it's $800 altogether for the eight nights. So that's 510 euro altogether for the eight nights. So that works out at 250 euro each, which works out at 31 euro per night. Again, it's a four star breakfast included right on the beach like the pool is here and then there's like a bit of grass and then there's the ocean like it's amazing the last time i stayed in the sister hotel it was great it was basic it was everything i needed so i'm very excited to give the pp princess a try to see if it's worth the extra dollar bills and um, to get from island to island or place to place in thailand you can get very cheap ferries you can get buses flights within thailand are obviously very cheap as well you can fly from bangkok to chiang mai maybe for 30 or 40 euro like nothing intense for pricing you could even get cheaper if you booked it in a fan to do any like excursions or day trips in thailand obviously if there is a very big group of you getting a certain deal or whatever you can or if there's a very big group of you getting like going on a trip a day trip you can get it cheaper obviously if there's 10 plus of you you can haggle it down a lot spending money so in thailand the food is so cheap you can literally get a 7-eleven toasty for like 50 cent if you've been to thailand and you don't know what a 7-eleven toasty is shame on you um, but like generally a meal would cost like three to ten euro ten euro being like in a five-star hotel or something but you don't like if you're staying in Thailand and you're staying in hotels unless it's included in the price I'd really recommend going out to the local restaurants um, obviously giving back to the local economy and the local Thai people Thai people are among the friendliest people I've actually ever met like they're so nice Thai food is amazing I love Thai food anyway obviously you want to be careful you don't want to drink any water that isn't bottled um, and just be wary because being European and being from Ireland your stomach wouldn't be able to handle some of the bacteria that would naturally be in some Thai food so you can get food really really cheap most of the places I've or all of the places I've booked include breakfast so like general rule of thumb you'd be spending maybe 10 to 15 euro a day maximum on food you can also the drink isn't expensive in Thailand but you could if you're going on a gals or guys drinking holiday you can end up spending a lot of your money on alcohol it wouldn't be expensive but it's just if you're drinking a lot every day obviously it's gonna add up you can get a chang beer for one or two euro if you like beer i don't unfortunately you can get a bucket for about a fiver it's obviously with going to thailand as like anywhere in the world you have to be wary I wore a bum bag all the time because all your stuff that you need are close to you. Keep your passport in a safe. Please God, be careful with your passport. I lost mine when I went to Thailand the first time. But if you lose your passport and you're Irish, it's actually not the end of the world. It's a pretty straightforward way to get around that. Just saying. If anyone needs help with that, comment down below. It does feel very safe once you're there. Like there are a lot of horror stories about Thailand and so many people be like, oh my friend, this happened to my friend's friend's friend, but it, it does feel very safe. But obviously you have to be aware, you have to have your wits about you. You never know what could happen. Um, any more advice? So spending money, obviously there is loads of markets in Thailand. There's the night markets that have all the fake shoes, the fake bags, the fake clothes, fake makeup, which you should not buy. And you can end up spending a lot of money there as well. So it really depends on what kind of holiday or what kind of trip you're planning on having. I would say generally three or four weeks in Thailand, a thousand euro would be plenty spending money. You could definitely live very comfortably on that you can pull it back a bit um, and you can spend a lot more it just generally depends on what you want but you don't want to go on a holiday and be like pinching pennies either so I would recommend just to have that little bit extra saved um, in case of emergency or anything like that but generally around 
a thousand euro would definitely get you a month in Thailand. I've been three diff different times. I went once with the girls. We did Chiang Mai, Phi Phi, Koh Samui, Koh Tao, Koh Phangan, and one night in Bangkok. Then I went last year, I went to Titan Fitness in Phuket and only there I didn't go anywhere else. And then this time I've told you the route I'm going to. If you have any more questions at all, please comment them down below. I will be in the comments answering your questions. Um, I'm going on Thursday and it's Sunday now. So I'm so excited to get there and I will be posting on my Instagram stories like the hotels and everything like that. I probably will do another YouTube video just maybe when I get home just going through where I stayed, was it worth the money, what I'd give the places out of 10, what we did etc because I will have more of an idea of how much exactly I spent and stuff but from memory that is it. So my camera battery died while I was mid chat but basically rounding up for Thailand you need about your flights will cost you anywhere from 600 to a thousand euro depending on when you book them obviously the earlier you book your flights the cheaper you'll get them for accommodation you can go anywhere for a month now this is based off you can spend anywhere from I'd say 400 euro upwards you can stay in the most luxury luxurious hotels for very reasonable so with spending money you could spend a little you could spend a lot it depends on how much alcohol you drink how much you spend at the markets but generally living in thailand is very affordable and cheap and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more from me i am 25 tomorrow and my goal was to get to 200 subscribers for my birthday don't think that's gonna happen but i'm at like 150 so i can't really complain but yeah i really hope you enjoyed this video and that is all for me i will see you in the next one Hasta la vista.